Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Visor Down. My name is Toad, and today we are in stunning Sardinia that you can see behind me. And we are here for the launch of the new Yamaha Nikon GT, the 2023 update to this model. <laughs> It's a bit of a funny launch this one because as is sometimes the way with Yamaha launches we're doing two bikes but today it's been just about the Nikon GT this is all we've ridden we've done 160 kilometers on the new Nikon GT today and uh, we've ridden from one end of the island where we landed in the north and we've come about halfway two-thirds of the way down the island taking in a bit of everything really twisties mountain roads switchbacks bit of dual carriageway and some motorway work as well I'm going to tell you what's new about the bike. I'm going to tell, give you a brief high level overview and then I'm going to go into how it was to ride. So the 2023 model is 16,210 uh, English pounds and that includes your on the road charges. It's going to be arriving in UK dealerships middle of May, maybe at the start of May. So if you're looking to get down to a dealership and see one in the flesh, you can do so from next month. The real changes with this bike, and it is kind of uh, trickling down from the MT-09 range of bikes. So it's got that new long stroke 890cc CP3 motor, which has got 118 bhp there or thereabouts. It's got this particular engine that's in the Nikon has got an increased uh, crank mass. So they've um, increased the mass of the crank by 8%. And that is to give it a bit more of a gutsy, a bit more of a, a, a grunty sort of low to mid-range delivery. We've also got a revised airbox. Unlike the other bikes in the CP3 range that we've ridden so far that have got this engine, namely the XSR900 and the MT-09 and MT-09 SP, their airboxes were tweaked to make them a little bit louder, a little bit more raucous and make them sound a bit better. This one's been tweaked in a different way and it's actually just to make it a little bit quieter and a little bit more refined when you are touring long distances. We've also got full uh, new TFT dash, which is all new. It's absolutely massive. It's like a widescreen tally, but it is actually very good. You also get Bluetooth connectivity with the TFT uh, dash. Chassis wise, obviously we've got a new engine. So the uh, front frame, so the trellis sort of frame that you can see there is all new, totally new for this model. We've also got a tweaked rear shock absorber, which has got different settings and it's got a different linkage. Um, which has been done to make sporty riding when you're on your own a little bit better, but also the rising ratio of the linkage also makes it a little bit better when you fully load it up and with two up on the bike. We've got an adjustable screen, uh, which is a big plus because the previous bike didn't have one. It's something that you want in this kind of like touring, sports touring, long-legged touring, whatever you want to call it, class. You do want an adjustable screen. This has got one and I can tell you it's super, super easy to use. The seat has been revised as well. So the seat height is the same, but the step over is narrower. So it makes it a little bit easier for short asses like me. And the engine uh, electronic modes, the engine modes and the power modes and everything else, they have been tweaked and updated as well. There's probably some minor things that I've missed in there, but that's basically all of the big stuff that you're going to be wanting to know about if you are looking to go out and ride a Nikon in 2023. So I'm going to go through what it's like to ride the engine first and foremost i've got a lot of experience with this the latest generation cp3 engines i had an mt09 as a long termer for over a year we went on the launch of the mt09 sp and i went on the launch of the xsr 900. in all of the bikes that i've ridden that have got this current 890 cc generation cp3 motor they all have a very very different character even from the mt09 sp to the xsr 900. It's the same with this. This again has got a totally different character. It's got a totally different feel, thanks to that crank with the increased mass slow down. It's got a little bit more go off the line than you than the previous generation Nikon. Um, but also in the sound and the feel of it, the revised airbox on this, it doesn't make it sound silky smooth. It's actually got a bit of a gravelly tone to it. When you wind the throttle on and you move from the mid-range of the rev range up until the uh, the top end it's got this kind of like gravelly sort of a bit of a uh, bit of a sort of like hard edged feel to the engine and the sound of it um the delivery and the, the way that you you know you wind the throttle on and the, the the power comes in the electronic throttle the ride by wire system on this is beautifully set up as it was on the previous bike what i noticed was the third gear overtakes that on the previous generation Nikon you would struggle with, 
This bike handles them better, thanks to that increased mass, that extra little bit of inertia that, that that's got in the in the bottom end of the engine. Um, but there are still some occasions where you will find yourself having to kick down a gear into second to get past the vehicle that you're trying to overtake safely. So another slight change for this year is the electronics have been tweaked, as I mentioned earlier on. So you've got the three stock riding modes that you can play with. You've got sport, street, rain, and you've got a custom mode as well, which is the one that you can configure and tweak and change. Sport and street, sorry, have got the same level of power output. It's just a different throttle map. And I much preferred the throttle connection in sport. It was much more direct. You got exactly what you asked for when you dialed it in and the bike felt much more eager. It also tweaks the traction control mode as well so that you've got a slightly more traction control in the street mode. The rain mode limits power by 18%, so it drops it down around about 100 horsepower and it obviously puts the traction control, which is two, level, um, two levels of traction control, including off, it puts that to the highest setting. In the rain setting, I mean, this bike would be ideal to test it in the rain because you've got the two front wheels, you've got all that extra grip that that provides and the extra poise and feel and composure. It would have been ideal to test it in the rain, but I didn't. I did drop it into the rain mode, and as you could expect, it felt pretty lethargic. The traction control was very intrusive, um, and it wasn't really what the day was about. This day was about carrying massive amounts of corner speed and going as fast as you possibly could at the exit and squirting it out the other side on the throttle, which was a hell of a lot of fun. I'll also say the traction control on this can be turned off. Now, the previous generation Nikon it kind of had this thing where it felt like it was almost too easy to overpower the back tire, the grip of the back tire. So even on dry roads, you could come out of a corner with the traction control off and you could give it a big handful and the back end would step out and it would slide round. And it was a lot of fun if you knew it was coming and you planned for it and you wanted it to happen. On those few occasions where you didn't, you had to go back at home and change your pants rather quickly. They've improved that for this model. The revised linkage in the rear shock and the revised suspension settings made it, it feels a tad firmer. It feels a bit stiffer at the back end. Um, and I also sort of found I'm 75 kilograms, which is probably more the weight of one of the Japanese test riders who would have ridden it when they're developing it. I sort of felt that it wasn't quite sat back. It was kind of sat up on its nose a bit. It was squatting less under power and you can still instigate a slide out of a slow corner in the drive with the 118 horsepower that it's got and the traction control turned off, but it was much harder to do so and it felt much more controlled when it did step out. Still a hell of a lot of fun. I just had to talk briefly about uh, fuel economy. So we've got an 18 litre fuel tank. I managed 6.2 um liters per 100 kilometers which i think is around about 40 mpg so going by that you've got somewhere between 170 miles tank range before you're going to want to start looking for a petrol station which isn't too bad it's an 18 liter tank so the fuel economy and that today that was basically more twisties uh more mountain roads more hard acceleration out of open bends than anything else. We probably did about 20 to 25 Ks of dual carriageway or motorway work. So I actually think that economy from the CP3 engine is pretty damn good. Uh, just gonna go through the handling of the Nikon. Look, the handling of this thing has always been its trump card. It's the thing that really impressed me with it was, number one, when you get above five miles an hour, how natural it feels as a motorcycle. It doesn't feel like a trike. It doesn't feel like a Vespa Piaggio MP3 or any of the other three wheelers that you can buy on the market. It feels like a motorcycle. The only thing that you've got is just more. You've got more grip, you've got more poise on the brakes, you've got more composure mid-turn, um, and it's just the, the amount of grip there, it dangerously, it almost makes it feel like you could never overstep the mark and fold the front end of the thing. There was a really eye-opening section of this ride when we were heading, after our final photo stop, we were heading back to the, the second hotel that we're at tonight. And there was a really fast stretch of road. I won't tell you how fast we were going, but we were going very, very quickly. There were a lot of very quick sweeping corners in there where you were carrying pretty much all the lean angle that the bike would got. The pegs were touching down and it just wasn't, it wasn't twitched. The bars weren't twitching. There was nothing going on. It didn't feel unstable. And there were potholes in the road where the top layer of the road surface had kind of been eroded away. And there was like an inch drop about the size of a dinner plate. And even if you ran into one of these potholes with one of the front wheels, the bike wouldn't respond. It wouldn't complain. There was no 
there, there was no feeling that it was going to get out of shape the back end was perfectly stable it was perfectly planted and that is what this thing is so good at you can't get that level of composure at those speeds in a fast corner on any other motorcycle other than this and that's what it's so good at is that and it can do that in all conditions which just blows my mind every time going to talk quickly about the brakes obviously weevil the lever feels nice and you get a lot of feedback through the uh through the suspension it still dives naturally as per a normal motorcycle would but what you do get is you get the ability to just brake and brake and brake really really hard right the way up until the apex of the corner without any of that abs intruding and so that's really important because it just means that the bike is so composed and so stable you've not got any judder from that you're not bleeding any brake pressure out of the front lever so that's another great thing about that extra front wheel is the amount that you can brake into and around the apex of a corner very quickly because i've gone on long enough the comfort of the bike was always good it's still good they've improved it with the new screen so it's not just adjustable it's slightly larger it's a bit more all-encompassing and they've also added a new base at the bottom which uh, allows a bit more air in at the bottom which stops that kind of vacuum of turbulent air that you get behind the uh, the dash of the bike made it more comfortable to ride over long distances it also made it quieter i'm really happy to report because it pisses me off when people put adjustable windscreens on bikes but they're so hard to adjust you can't do it on the fly the one on this is very very easy to use you've got like a little lever reach forward grab the lever pull the lever lift the screen up the only annoying thing is the levers on the right hand side of the screen so you have to take your hand off the throttle or put the bike onto cruise control before you can adjust the screen which is a bit of a ball ache i don't understand why you wouldn't put that on the left hand side of the machine Right, I've gone on for ages, so I'm going to wind this one up. These bikes are still an acquired taste. There are so many people out there that think they're for disabled people or people who haven't got a bike license. None of that is true. You need a full license for this. The front wheels are so close together, it's classed as a motorcycle. It's not built for disabled people. It is a proper motorcycle. It feels like a proper motorcycle when you ride it, and it goes like a proper motorcycle, especially on the roads that we've been riding today. Like anything else in the world, to really understand something like this you can't read reviews you can't watch youtube videos you can't walk around a bike show sit on it and grab the clutch and jump up and down on the seat you need to get to a dealership and you need to test ride one because that is the only way that you will ever be able to understand what the bike is about i'm not saying that everybody has to go out there but if you've been curious about the yamaha nike and even just slightly curious come may you need to get yourself down to a dealer have a chat to them and see if they've got a demo bike for you there is going to be a full re editorial review of this bike going out on visordown.com in the coming days, so please do go over and check that out. And for all the latest news, reviews and motorcycle features, get yourself over to visordown.com. Thank you, folks.